percussionists continuing their competitions that are doing very well and loving the whole time spent with the crew. Pi Day was today, and Olivia Jacobs was first place winner with our Reciting Pi competition with 102 digits. Uh, seventh grade step up day is this Thursday, I believe, and the ambassadors are prepping for that. DY is beginning to post po- uh, beginning to post positive affirmations on little sticky notes. They handed them out at lunch. You just write down like, oh, you got this and stuff, and they're pa- posting it all around the school, which is cute uh, because this month is DY's Mental Health Awareness Month. So yeah, <laughs> and you're off to do an AP project. So <laughs> good luck. Thank you for coming. All right, um, superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we're going to open up this this evening's meeting with um, two of our friends from Station Avenue, uh, Lori, Lori Richardson, who is our social worker, and Joni Leitner, who is our behavior support teacher. And uh, we say AKA rock stars. Um, and uh, they're here tonight. I invited them to come tonight because, as you all know, we've talked before about our PBIS program. And in fact, in the fall, I think you uh, were all here when um, the woman came uh, to present the district with an award for PBIS. Um, and sometimes I think it's hard for people who don't do the work to um, be able to fully understand. When we were talking about not having masks anymore and things like that. And it was okay, some people could wear them, some people couldn't. It's sort of, in my mind, if you don't do this work every day, you might be saying to yourself, well, how are they gonna pull that off with those really little kids? And um, I think uh, our schools are masterful at working with the age groups that they each have. And um, I happen to come across this because I see uh, almost everything from every school. So I happen to, noticed this and thought it was really um, well done in terms of helping our kids as they were coming back to school on the 28th of February to be okay if some people were wearing masks, but to understand also that some people wouldn't be wearing masks and why that was important. At Station Avenue, um, each um, school sets their own um, sort of expectations for behavior for students and staff. And I know that the pillars that they work with are safe, respectful, responsible, and caring. But what PBIS does is it helps the kids understand what that looks like in action. And so I feel really um, terrific tonight to be able to show this to you. And I'm very appreciative of of our two staff members who came here tonight to share this because I think through their eyes, you'll be able to see how we conduct ourselves with our young students when we're trying to get them to understand things like opinions, differences, and acceptance, which I think is very important in today's world. There we go. This topic was a little bit more specific. We've done a perspective lesson in the past, springing off of my comma choice background, but this one was in Joni's wheelhouse, and we really like the the approach that she took with us. So go ahead. Sure. Um, so this one, opinion differences and acceptance. One of the reasons why, as um, Ms. Woodbury said, was that we wanted to kids to come back to feel comfortable to know that their choices are their own or their own families. Um, What we do, just a little background, um, we pull from Lori's Commerce Choice background, we do a little bit from my SEL background and from the PBIS lessons, um, and we create weekly or monthly lessons that we put into a shared drive and then boost out to teachers every month, so every month there might be different topics. So we decided to address this month as the topic with the masks. Um, so basically it's a welcome message back um, explaining you know why we had to wear masks um, it's done in K to 3 language as you can tell um, and it's kind of that social story repetition um, you know we are now allowed to make a choice if we want to wear a mask or not wear a mask and whatever you decide it's okay to wear a mask and it's okay not to wear a mask um, and to make your choices that fit you the best Um, Again, some of the teachers are friends, and we thought it was important to put in teachers, too, because some teachers were wearing masks and some aren't. Um, It's their choice to make for themselves or their families, and some teachers or friends um, are not wearing a mask. It's their choice. 
Um, this I actually picked off <laughs> the DY Parents page, so I don't know who created this. Um, I stole it from them, so thank you very much. Um, but I thought it was important, and I, I did get good feedback from the teachers that, you know, why do people wear masks? And it's got a lot of examples you can see. Um, it's kind of hard to see from here, but, um, uh, you know, explaining why some people are choosing to wear a mask. Maybe they have an elderly parent at home they're caring for. Or maybe they're just afraid of getting sick. Um, there's all different ways. Um, and then this kind of just targets the whole feeling behind it. Um, you know, the pictures, I think, are really important in K-3. to um, Even with the words said to them, I think they focus a lot more on the pictures. Um, you know, it's never okay to make fun of someone because of their choices. Uh, all people and all families have opinions and differences that are just right for them, and that word is acceptance, the key to that. So um, this is a video. I won't make you watch it, but it's a really cute video about Royce Bedoyce makes a good choice. Um, it's just a little video segment we found, and he basically talks about um, having opinions. And what are opinions? Do we know what that word means? Respect. Um, Lori, do you want to talk about this? Because I'm talking sure. Too much. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, differences. Just what do we like? It's okay to like different things. That's something that kids um, at this young level don't always recognize, and they think their friends might be weirdos if they don't like the same things. Um, so again, just letting them know. Here are some examples. Very clear examples. Concrete examples at this level work really well. Um, and so we just need to remember that, you know, some people will be wearing their mask and some won't. Just like some people like to eat fish and, and some people don't. Um, and either way, it's okay. This is a Todd Bar Parr book. You guys might be familiar with this book. It's a great, I love him. Um, it's a great book about differences and it just kind of in that K to three language goes through the differences and it's actually read by the author. So we don't have to, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then, you know, how every family is different in their own way, because we just talked about differences. Um, and you can see from the picture examples, different examples of families, um, and how, you know, what makes you different or unique makes you special, and understanding and respecting differences is called acceptance. And this slide, in, I just want to say one more thing about that slide. That's, uh, we have some other, other lessons that are about cultural diversity, and I really think those pictures kind of also go back to that previous lesson and it helps kids remember we have different families we have different meals we have different things that we do maybe even other topics that are about our culture at home um, so I like this slide a lot yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then we always end with a dance um, we should make you guys get up and move but we won't <laughs> um, but we always end with some sort of song or dance to kind of get the kids up moving because we want it to be fun we want it to be inclusive and we want kids to enjoy the lesson um, you know a lot of times we're so focused on the academics that the social and emotional part of it um, just remembering those basics that all kids need to feel connected to their classroom and their friends and to have some fun so and that's the dance and I think that's it um, you know just the ending is to remember um, to help us be a better person a better friend so Go ahead, did, you, did you want us to say anything about how we started off with this, you know, whole idea of creating lessons? So when we came back post-pandemic, we were like, what are we going to do with this block of time? We wanted to really get meaty and cho choosy about what we were doing for social-emotional learning. She brought in some stuff from Castle she'd been studying over the summer. We started off with Lucy's mask as one of our... Yeah. Um, expectations about mask wearing we address social distancing so there have been many things we've put into that drive we actually had some help with technology because the way we were initially doing it um, we weren't doing so great and we had a lot of help with that um, we now do our lessons using Google, Google Slides and teachers can access it really easily we started embedding our handouts or any follow-up uh, activities also this year into that drive. Right. We didn't do that initially because we were going to classrooms and we were making handouts or bringing materials with us because we knew we had to keep separate. It was definitely a, a learning experience and I give props to Joanna Watson who actually kind of talked us through. We tried to Zoom 
into classrooms, which was a big epic fail because some co some classes had connectivity, some didn't. There were parents trying to run the show, and so we finally came up with this idea. And I think we have over forty different lessons in the yeah, drive we now. Did, we did, I think, thirty-two last year, and we've been building on it. So, so the next the next two this month we have planned. One's fully created already. It's about the differences of teasing and bullying because we're finding that the students today are using the word bullying, but with two years lagging in social skills, they really can't distinguish that well at this young level because they haven't had a lot of experiences. <laughs> so we're trying to do presentations geared for those things they may be missing. Right, and we're doing, uh, we just updated recess safety and we're gonna be doing um, cafeteria use as things open up. That's it. Any questions? I just want to thank you for coming here, and I know um, Jenny's going to turn it over to the committee to see if they have any questions or comments. I think it's uh, how timely to put a PBS lesson plan on the basis of masks wearing or not. Uh, that is timely and foresightful, if I can use make up that word. The and. In a larger context, there are those who know what PBIS stands for, and there are those who don't, and either way is okay. <laughs> Positive behavior intervention systems or solutions, whichever way you want to, is it right? Supports. 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 Sorry, I always get that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Is this their first time having cafeteria experience? Yep. Yes. Yes, yeah. it is. Okay, so that's I, when you said that, it's just it kind of put it all together. And one have never have never had it and either. K and one students have not experienced preschool prior to coming to us. It's a really different group of kids. They're vi they just haven't had experiences. You know, the like the Im like the impact that this is going to have on them because of before. Before it was just something that was natural for the kids to just go into. Now it's just like there's been a cafeteria, but they've never had to go to it. They've had lunch, but it's just like a whole new environment with behaviors and mm -hmm. things like that that have to come into it. And I yeah. just yeah. want to make sure I say our teachers are rock stars. Like you know, on top of everything else they have to do, we should we, you know, give them this lesson. They so find a time during the week to do it, and they do. They do, and they have discussions about it, and they, you know, sometimes they'll use the handouts, and, mm -hmm. you know, um, so, you know, kudos to them. Last year, we had the luxury of having a 30-minute block across one grade level at a time, and we had the staffing to put somebody in facilitating the lesson in addition to the teacher. This year was a little bit tighter with scheduling, but um, they're using it. They want it. They've asked, do you have a lesson on this? So we're getting input from teachers We've had some responses on the PBIS survey about, you know, just generating ideas. What else can we load in? Um, and we didn't want to totally lose some of the common toy stuff. When we went to six foot distancing, that whole model I used to do with kids went out the window. So we had to find a way to try and do some of that too. Right. Like for example, with recess opening up a little more, uh, we just did another recess, um, an updated recess lesson just showing the expectations of recess because again we need to teach expectations we need to teach them because they've been in isolated segments for 2 years now mm -hmm. you're welcome thanks for having us thank you very much um carol the second part of the report is i just have a couple more quick things okay. um I just wanted to um, give you all some positive news about at least about COVID f uh, for the last uh, week. Uh, from March 2nd to March 8th, we only had six COVID cases in the whole district. And uh, three of our schools, the high school, Mattakees and Wixon, had none. And so we're, tr we're tracking it from Wednesday to Tuesday. Every uh, Wednesday, I will be sending out a, a notice to parents. And that was a request of a parent who emailed me and said, you know, I want to make good decisions about for my student um, about wh whether or not I want him or her to wear a mask to school. And um, if you could send us out some information every week, it would help me make that decision. So I thought that was a really um, good and fair ask. And um, so we started that. And um, we were really happy 
the first week for sure, and we're hoping. And given that we just came back from the school vacation, I think that's pretty remarkable. So we'll see what continues to transpire, but I'll keep you updated um, with that as we go along. And I see that um, Michelle Dunn just walked in, but I want to give you the good news that um, our Teachers Association voted positively for the longer school day for grades four through seven. So we're very, very excited about that. Thank you, Michelle. That's it. Uh, next up is uh, School Building Committee. Um, thank you. We do, I don't really have an update, but we do have a presentation. Um, I believe Chad Critton's here from PMA um, for a presentation. So I'll let him um, do all the uh, do all the explaining and what's going on and the great things um, that are happening there. Um, just before he speaks, these th the group that we've been working with since I don't know 2017, something 18, right in there. Um, has been phenomenal. Um, they've been easy to reach. I've called them a number of times. If they don't answer the phone, they call me back within 10 minutes. Um, you know, and they're they're eager to speak, and they're not. They don't. I don't feel rushed when I talk to them or ask questions or have concerns. Um, and they explain it really well. And if they don't have the answer, they get back to us really quickly. So, um, you know, I'm really uh, you know proud that we we coupled together with the group that we're with. So, thank you, Chad. Um, I know, Carol. I think you're. Getting something ready here. Yeah, Carol's getting a presentation. Okay. I'll be right in just a moment. Yep, Carol's just getting a presentation up on the screen. Joe, you had posted um, a, a photo from a, as a, a drone. As a drone shot. Yeah, it was where from, did that come from? I believe from? that was from uh, a person as Max Drones, I believe, was that. I'm not sure where. Is it associated with one of the, our vendors? I don't vendors believe or? it is. I oh don't think you oh guys oh aren't wow. with it. No, but it, yeah, there's a lot of guys that fly the drones around neat places and, and um, he had taken some great pictures of the uh, of the school there were a number of different ones but that the one that I had, had put on there was um, it just shows that it, it, it's funny to see because we had the drawings and that the pictures of it and okay this is going to be here and this is what it's going to look like but it was just a, a sketch you know a sketch drawing but now that you see it in an aerial view it looks exactly like what the <laughs> sketch is going to be and it's like oh wow this is really you know this is really here um, so it, uh, yeah, it's really, and it really thing. helped visualize how the buildings fit together, together, how it fits with station Ave, you know, where the entrances exits are. It really was nice to see that, that view like that. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. No, it's going to, it's going to look, I, I'd love to see it in another couple months cause it's going to change with all the greenery and things like that. That's going to happen. So. All right. I think we can turn it over. There we go. Thank you, Joe, for the kind words. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good to see everybody in person. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Chad Critton, and I am the project director for the Intermediate Middle School Project next door. Um, so I'd like to just bring you up to speed on where we are in the construction project. The, uh, the project to date has, has been uh, tremendously fun to work on. Uh, the entire team is working well together. Uh, the general contractor, Commodore, has been terrific. The design uh, firm, Perkins Eastman, has been awesome. All the subconsultants, all the contractors, uh, so really credit to the entire project team. It really is a model of what a project should look like. Um, so to take you through the building very quickly, uh, up on the screen you see the summary of work activities. Uh, and I actually have a, a picture that probably tells the story a little bit better rather than go through that itemized list. All right, uh, so these pictures do span all the way back to early January. So you'll see the building progress as I flip through the slides. Uh, this first picture is showing the interior of one of the courtyards. Uh, that yellow material you see there is the, the sheathing. Uh, so that is um, the product that is on the underside of the, uh, the exterior wall assembly. Uh, the next picture here, you'll see the air and vapor barrier, which goes over that sheathing. So this, this picture is fast forward till uh, close to present day. Uh, you can see the windows are in, the AVB is in, the roof cap is in. We are uh, tight at this point, so the interior work can progress on the building. Uh, as you move into the interior, this is again an older shot. So this is in C building, which is the, um, the middle pod, so to speak. Uh, so you can see the walls are all framed out. This is a shot down the corridor. The mechanical piping and the duct work was being installed at this time. Uh, it's progressed since then. You'll see in a few more photos. Uh, over in the gymnasium, we call that Building B. Uh, so this is the start of the CMU walls. So uh, you see the building is tarped in now, so it's heated in order to maintain temperature so they can keep working through the winter months. 
Uh, again, you'll see in a couple of pictures that's progressed quite a bit. Uh, this is a picture of a gang bathroom, the plumbing carriers. Uh, so this all gets uh, pre-assembled and then shipped to the site and set into place. And uh, once again, this is all insulated and ready to be closed up in, in much of the building. Uh, this picture here is a, a photo of a roof access stair. Uh, this is something that i uh, very fortunate to have. It's something the MSBA pushes for in their new buildings. Uh, buildings 10 years ago a lot of times just had a roof access hatch, but they are pushing more and more for a full stair going up there. And that's to, uh, to ensure that the, the proper maintenance happens. So the easier accessible it is, the uh, more likely it is that it will be maintained properly. Uh, so this is another shot of the overhead mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems in building C, that middle wing. And then here is a picture of the slab on grade placement at building B. So this is looking in uh, what eventually becomes sort of a, a main lobby area. Uh, typical roof insulation here, so again, building C, this is the middle wing. At this point, the, the roof is complete in all areas except for the gymnasium. Um, they flash right over the mechanical penetrations for now to get the building nice and tight. And then as that equipment starts to show up, they'll, uh, they'll cut the roofing back, install the equipment, and then flash it back in to maintain a nice uh, weather-tight condition on the inside of the building and allow that work to progress. Uh, we do have drywall insulation going on in uh, D building uh, as well as C building and portions of B building. Uh, so moving right along there. Uh, all the interior walls do get insulated, and that's for acoustic treatment in the classroom. So one of the major benefits of a new school building, are, uh, they're all acoustically treated so that you don't have that noise pollution from room to room. Uh, another look at a slab on grade placement. This is from last Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so almost complete with slabs. We have one, uh, one actually, the cafeteria and then one area over by the auditorium left to place. Uh, so they're just chipping away at it as the weather allows. We cannot place the slabs in super cold weather. Uh, and they have plenty of work elsewhere in the building, so they focus the manpower efforts towards those parts of the building that are weather tight and ready to progress. Uh, but this will be wrapped up shortly. Uh, that giant structure you see over by Station Ave, we've had lots of questions on this. Um, it is not a guard tower. It is the building mock-up, and the point of that mock-up is to have each of the various trades go in and construct what they plan to eventually construct on the finished building. And at each stage of this, it's reviewed by the design team and the engineers to make sure that uh, everything is correct and per the details and uh, a good, solid, weather tight, and the quality of the work is acceptable to the design team. So that's the purpose of that two-story structure that you see out there. Uh, over at the fields in the back, uh, the retaining wall installation started about a month ago. Um, they've exported all of the surplus material and they're prepping the sub base for the uh, fields that were recently uh, decided on. Uh, over in D wing, so that uh, far rear wing, you can see the air vapor barrier and attachment clips are installed in the D-wing. So the attachment clips, are they're tough to see in that picture. You see little blips every 16 inches on center or so. And that's, um, that's for a piece of girt to go over it. And then the exterior wall assembly system attaches to that piece of girt. And there's a couple more pictures of that in a moment. Uh, so moving over to D building, some of the overhead mechanicals, you can see at this point that the uh, hydronic and domestic water pipes are all insulated, so we're, we're getting close to being able to close up ceilings. Uh, the drywall that you see there is what we call topping off. So they put up the, the top portion of drywall and then they can punch all their utilities through it and then uh, once the walls are ready to be closed in, they'll do the bottom half. Process moves pretty quick from there. Uh, also over at the rear of the building, the precast base is being installed on D building. They're uh, probably two-thirds of the way through D building at this point, a precast base that just recently started. Uh, masonry, so the, the brick facade is underway. Uh, so you can see the brick down at the bottom of this picture, and then in the middle of the frame you see the insulation. So on a commercial project like this, the insulation happens outbo outboard of the sheathing, so it's a waterproof uh, mineral wool material. And then moving back into the building, uh, second floor of building B, we have cementitious 
uh, fireproofing, and that's not in every space. It's dependent on the, the type of construction that that particular wing of the building happens to be. Uh, but we do have it here, and that's what you're seeing in that picture. Uh, this is a more current picture of the gymnasium. So you can see the CMU walls are all the way up to the roof line. Uh, that roof deck that you see is transparent. So you're seeing the roofing materials through the transparent deck. And the reason that's transparent is because it's acoustic metal, metal decking. Uh, so it's to keep the, the echo down within the gymnasium. So there's little perforated holes in that decking. Uh, over at the auditorium, so the, as you're looking at it from Station Ave, this would be kind of towards the front left of the building, um, looking back into the building. You can see the, uh, so this is standing in what will eventually become the music rooms, looking into the future auditorium. So that structural uh, tiered seating that you see there is, uh, is what you're looking at. Uh, another shot, a more recent shot of the main lobby. So again, you see the spray fireproofing. Uh, you can see the decking right above. And uh, they're working their way from the rear of the building forward because this is closer to the front of the building. That's a little bit behind the other photos that you saw. Uh, here is a typical classroom wing egress stair. So this happens at the end of each of the primary corridors. And then uh, moving again into that far rear wing, you can see uh, what's really starting to take shape as a eventual classroom. So drywall is up, the windows are in. Uh, you can see all the overhead mechanical electrical plumbing systems. Uh, most of them are insulated, ready to go. So pretty soon we'll start to see mud on these walls and then a ceiling grid go in and it really comes together very, very quick from that point. Uh, this is what most of that far rear wing looks like right now. Uh, and then jumping to the outside, this is actually probably right on the other side of that wall that we were just looking at. Uh, you can see the masonry starting to work its way up. Uh, so this is a weather dependent activity, so they're chipping it away at it as the, the weather permits. Um, but the building is nice and tight, so they're able to continue interior construction without impact. Uh, flipping around to the other wall of D-Wing, uh, you can see the masonry is up a little bit higher. Really kind of a, a cool uh, brick and masonry pattern here. You can see it on the mock-up too. Uh, looking ahead, so major activities. Uh, we're going to wrap up the, the slab placement very, very soon. Uh, curtain wall installation is actually underway. The curtain wall is, is kind of that big uh, exterior assembly system. So it happens like in the end of the stairs, the, the main entry. Uh, duct and pipe insulation will continue from the rear of the building moving towards the front. Uh, roofing at the gym will be wrapped up and uh, mechanical electrical plumbing will follow towards the front of the building right along with the roof. Um, out at the field you'll see the retaining walls continue and you'll start to see some of the sub-base material come in for the future fields. And uh, I think that wraps up what I had but I'm happy to answer any questions the committee might have. Thank you. Bill? I was struck by how much it's beginning to look like an actual school because you see classrooms, you see uh, stairwells. But one thing I can't get over is the insulation pipes in Building D and the piping and ductwork in Building C look very reminiscent of the Star Wars duel between Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Uh, the angles are just right. So you've got something going there which we can rent out. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Great observation. A great set of subcontractors. They really take pride in their work, so credit to them. Joe. Um, I just wanted to also just extend an invite um, to anybody that the committee members that want to do a tour. Um, like I said, it's when you walk through the place, it, it takes on a whole new meaning. Um, so just get in touch with Carol or myself, and we'll we'll uh, we'll get you. I'll leave my lightsaber at home. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Chad, for the uh, presentation. Um, is it always fun? You said it was fun. Is it always fun in these things, or are, are we a kind of a special uh, uh, group 
Do we got a great team together is what I guess I'm asking. It really is a great team. No, they're not always fun. Uh, <laughs> okay. it can be very, very stressful. And I mean, like any project, it, it has its challenges. But when you have a team that is willing to work together and put their differences aside and overcome the challenge, it makes a huge difference. And that's what we have here. And Some that goes top to bottom from Perkman's Eastman to Commodore to the building committee, everybody. All the way up, yep, right to uh, Superintendent Woodbury's office. Everyone's been absolutely terri terrific to work with, and that's really a recipe that leads you to a successful project. That's great. And I, I just want to point out, I want to commend the uh, building committee because I don't think they get enough uh, credit for what they're doing, and, and, you, and you heard him, you heard Chad say that directly. So um, I haven't seen um, the building committee, uh, I usually saw like an agenda. I haven't seen one in a while, but... I, I don't know if I'm just missing it, but... Yeah, we meet every month. Okay. I forget when the next one's. The next one will be in April. Yeah, but anyway, Joe, please pass that along to the building committee. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they, they're doing, they did a great job, and they continue to do a great job. So, uh, but thank you very much. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Joe, they say in my family that you have to go through hell to get to heaven, so I think that's where we're in that possession. We're progressing up that, so... I can see why they say that, Joe. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, thank you so much for the presentation. That's great to see. Thank you. Um, and actually that ties right into the assistant superintendent's report. So before, I just wanted to mention first too that tomorrow evening, Carol and I are gonna have a, a, a double header with the two town halls going to the board of selectmen first at five o'clock in Dennis and then following that up at 645 in Yarmouth. So in case anyone's interested in that. And then going on to the memo that's in your packet, it has to do with a with an amendment for oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. But then moving on to the memo that is in your packet, it is for an amendment to Perkins Eastman, the designer. And this has to do with the field space immediately behind Station Avenue School, which was disturbed with the construction and putting a field back in for the students. And Carol and I and, and Principal Crowell went out there a few weeks back and looked at it and thought that if we could push the road over a little bit, could make the field a little bit larger and safer for the students, provide a walkway from the parking lot, the new parking area to the building for the staff so there'd be a constant paved area, and also putting in a crosswalk from the recess playground area to the new fields in the back, and there will be fencing all along there as well to, to be safe for the students, but then also provide a dedicated crossing area. So minor changes to the overall plan, but then need to be designed and then forwarded down to the um, construction crew so that led to this design change to Perkins Eastman for the eleven thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars so if I could I'd like and this was supported by the building committee as well I wanted to mention that but if we could look for an amendment for amendment number seven in the amount of eleven thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars for Perkins Eastman do you need want a motion uh, I move that the school committee vote to approve amendment number seven to the contract with Perkins Eastman DPC in the amount of $11,880, bringing the new total amount of the contract to $9,120,030.00. All right, uh, motion has been made and seconded. Uh, discussion? Anyone have questions, Joe? I just have a comment. Um, this is just for the design phase. This is not for the actual work to be done, but the from what and Chad might, I know he's left, but I, I believe it's not going to necessarily cost much of anything more because we're just shifting a roadway over to make more of a feel a playing area, a play area for the Station Ave School. If I'm, if I, if that sounds correct, yep, exactly, Joe. So directly behind the Station Ave School, there was a driveway that would come in where they received their deliveries. That was always in the design. We're just shifting it. I guess you want to call it west, north, northwest to leave the grassy area larger for students at recess and putting the same driveway in probably just 75 to 100 feet further down the roadway. And it's also potentially would have driven over where the underground fuel tank is. We decided that wasn't a good place to have all the trucks driving over that on any daily deliveries of food, paper, things like that. So there shouldn't be too much construction difference, as Joe said. Maybe just the, um, the walkway, which was not included in the beginning, and then a little bit of paint for a crosswalk. All the other materials would be the same, just shifted west. I just want to say I'm very I'm, f I'm for this because you know the one thing about the great thing about the new school is uh, what the students will get but 
you know, we also have to remember that the Station Avenue students and staff are in the middle of the construction zone. And I know that that's been a lot of discussions. And I know Mr. Kroll and uh, Superintendent Woodbury have been constant talks. And I appreciate everyone who's who's helped them through all the, the situations that have. Um, and, you know, it's great to have the new school, but I'm, I'm glad that we're we're making sure that our neighbors, our other school is, is, is being taken care of and that all the stuff that we can do to help them in the future as well will be taken care of. So thank you. I supported this on the uh, building committee. One of the th things I remember when Station Avenue was first built, the backside n didn't seem to get as much public attention. So the town hall of Yarmouth wanted to make Station Avenue a polling place and the entrance would be on the backside. And it created all sorts of confusion and congestion uh, because it didn't get, it didn't have the width of traffic flow and parking. So uh, I'm glad to see the foresight coming in to make the whole backside uh, more amenable to traffic flow and safety. Anybody else? All right, uh, we have a motion that's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's a unanimous vote. And that's sent to me tonight, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, so on to the consent agenda. Oh, sorry, um, anything from the boards of selectmen? Um, no, I just wanted to reiterate because of the meeting uh, tomorrow, uh, the uh, presentation of the, the the DUI. I'll probably be there one way or the other, but um, anybody that uh, is interested uh, from both towns, I think you should uh, watch because I think it's it's uh, great information for the towns. But uh, just a reminder for the public that there is that presentation. Thank you. Um, on the consent agenda, um, there is a memo from um, Principal Bovino at Mattakees thanking the Dennis Union Church for the large donation of hygiene products for the students. Um, also a donation of children's picture books to the elementary schools from Ms. D.D. D. Beckwith of Marston's Mills. It looks like it was a book written by her sister. Um, thank you for that donation. And a donation of a Yashica FX2 analog camera and accessories to the high school from Patricia Casey. And two Ludwig timpanies to the Mattakees Music Department from Ian Ellis. Thank you for these donations. Um, and then there's a surplus um, surplus memo um, from Ms. Carlson, six boxes of curriculum items and five rovers at the ME Small. And the minutes of the February 28th meeting. Anyone move the consent agenda? I'll move the consent agenda. Second? Yes. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, bills, requisitions, that's coming around. Calendar is in there. Um, speaking of calendars, uh, Carol is working on um, a um, academic year calendar for the next two years, Carol, or just one this time? All right, TBD. Um, uh, so after a couple meetings this week, she'll be able to bring us a draft um, calendar so that we can get that out. I know parents have been asking. So um, we will have a public comment period. If you'd like to address the committee, please raise your hand. I'll recognize you. You can step up to the microphone. You'll have uh, up to three minutes to address the committee. Would anyone like to address the committee tonight? Ms. Morris. Vita Morris. Um, I wonder if uh, this might be too early, uh, but are there any statistics available as to how uh, the percentages are between those who wear masks and those who are not wearing masks in the schools? They're not 
actually doing a count on that. I, there's there's no data on that. Uh, and no 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 sort of uh, you know uh, ballpark figure or anything like that. I think. No, I mean I've seen photos of, you know, there's anecdotal evidence I would say from kids reporting back, but there's no actual count. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, I just uh, when when the uh, consultant was doing his presentation, uh, uh, I uh, kind of I wanted to ask the question. It just came to me. Um, uh, do the windows in the school open? Yes. They do. That's good because. There have been some serious problems in uh, commercial buildings and uh, everywhere else when the, uh, uh, they didn't. So um, now uh, I, uh, I took note of uh, uh, resignation at the, in the Falmouth School District of uh, what I uh, understand to be a person who was hired in some capacity to be uh, to be presenting the uh, uh, the so-called critical race theory and and uh, uh, the similar subject matters and without any explanation, I wonder uh, is there any hope that uh, we can get the same to happen uh, with the person that's been hired, the consultant that's been hired for this district for that type of uh, 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 activity. I, I've told you before, and I'll say it again, we haven't hired anyone to implement a critical race theory curriculum. Well, there is a consultant who was doing uh, something, and I, I'm, I'm sure it's a paid consultant, but that, be that as it may. Uh, if you'd like to know what she's doing, you can attend one of the two um, presentations she'll be doing to the community. Okay. Um, uh, I just... Uh, uh, a lot, a lot of that, uh, especially the uh, so-called resolution, I think that uh, on which the, uh, uh, I guess, this consultant's hiring uh, hinged. Uh, um, that's uh, in that's incorrect. Well, I don't know, but uh, well, I don't know that the, you you people voted uh, uh, unanimously for that resolution. So, um, and that was based on materials that came have primarily came out of the those who are related to the Black Lives Matters. That's that incorrect. Um, by the way, when was the last time you heard that those words? Black Lives Matter. Your three minutes are up. Thank uh, you. Really? Well, anyway, uh, I, I think it's interesting that it happened after uh, they uh, they were being investigated. Ms. Morris, your three minutes are up. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the committee tonight? All right, that's all we have for tonight. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much.